Hello guys welcome back to Tutorial Grounds, today I will be recapping a movie titled My Teacher, My Crush. A joyful family is shown in the opening scene of the movie cherishing their time together. Lana is the name of the mother of a little girl. Before heading to work, she can be spotted exercising in the forest. Lana is a high school instructor. Soon after handing out test preparation materials, she notices one of the new pupils staring at her. When Lana goes to pick up her daughter, she notices the same boy from her class walking his dog and gives him a long look. The following day, as Jeremy is giving a presentation, Valerie is talking and laughing loudly in front of the class. On Valerie's phone, the two girls are surfing a humorous website, so Lana is forced to take the phone away. Nonetheless, Valerie maintains her composure and calls Lana a beach while cursing at her. Valerie is sent to the headmistress office by Lana as punishment while maintaining her composure. The other pupils cheering. Lana notices the new student is looking at her once more. Lana witnesses the boy pupil throwing a girl's bicycle to the ground and emptying her backpack during playtime. Lana becomes increasingly intrigued by his peculiar behavior and inquires of the headmistress about him. She learns that he goes by the name Benny, but not that he's a good kid. Benny, on the other hand, intrigues Lana, who decides to speak with him. She conveys her worry about his future and concern over his behavior toward his classmates. Benny makes fun of her by questioning what her true desires are. In order to learn more about this young person, who has baffled and captivated Lana, she performs some research on him. From what it seems, she can't stop thinking about Benny. She jogs in the forest as she attempts to block out her disturbing thoughts about him pausing sometimes to take in the view of the lake. Lana notices that Benny has left his backpack at the school. Without caring if it is sweaty or not, she decides to have a look and sniffs at one of Benny's garments she discovers inside. Benny then surprises her and touches her breast while she uses the restroom. Without saying anything, Lana approaches him to kiss him after being hot to the touch from the sniffing and prying. She then pulls away and informs him that what he's doing is wrong. She departs, but the close encounter keeps her awake that night. Her husband, Ward, is sound asleep next to her. Recently, mischievous Benny couldn't quit staring at his teacher. Now that she is at her wit's end, Lana is unsure of what to do. Benny boldly approaches her as they move through the halls of the school and invites her to meet with him afterward. Lana, of course, advises him to forget about her because she is unable to do that. Benny, though, is not just mischievous, but also a brat. Lana notices that her side mirror is broken. Can she show that Benny did that? No. She then departs to pick up Raja, her daughter, from school. Heading back home, Lana stops dead in her tracks as she spots Benny on a scooter and a group of kids hanging around by a building's entrance. Later that day, when Ward inquires about what happened to Lana's automobile, Lana tells a story about colliding with a lamppost. Ward gives her a suspicious glance as though looking for signs of deception before returning inside. Benny says a few crude things to the headmistress about Lana having oral sex while performing oral sex in front of the class as Lana distributes sheets once more. Benny is instructed to speak with management by Lana, who is displeased and exits instead. The other kids shouting and hooting were too loud for the classroom to bear. Later that day, Lana has the impression that someone is keeping an eye on her in the forest. The phone rings as Lana is reading Raja a story. Lana picks it up, but no one answers on the other end of the line. Lana explains that the phone is broken when Raja asks what's wrong. Lana becomes too frightened to even enter the room because she believes Benny is stalking her. Class she chooses to take the day off and calls in ill. When Ward inquires about her day, Lana lies once more, claiming that she had an evaluation interview and had spent the entire day teaching. Lana consumes a green apple in solitude while continuing her continued absence from work, after which she visits a gallery to view pictures. When she turns back and realizes Benny is genuinely stalking her, she becomes pale. Despite Lana's attempts to flee, Benny won't let up. He approaches her while swooping like a vulture, waiting for her to trip and fall. Yet Lana walks away because she knows better. She enters the elevator after spotting Benny looking for her. Lana looks at Ward and Raja while feeling somewhat guilty. 
In a manner, she acknowledges that the force she is currently experiencing with Benny is far stronger than her by relating a dream she had about a force holding her underwater and slowly drowning her. Poor Ward, who is almost certainly a full-time cuckold, just listens. Lana runs into the woods and throws a pebble into the lake to metaphorically stir things up. She opens a file cabinet in the headmistress office at the school and looks through the documents. For and ultimately snatching a piece of government paper. Acting composed, she exits the office and makes her way to the cafeteria, where she slips the paper into Benny's jacket covertly. Lana spends more time with Ward now, as though she has made the necessary corrections. She grins to herself as she observes Benny being taken into custody for the theft. The previous day, as she and Ward were swimming in the lake, she saw that he was diving but not rising. Up until Ward appears and startles her, she starts to worry. Nevertheless, this is simply a dream that highlights Lana's concern that she might lose her husband if Benny decides to exact retribution. Once Benny is kicked out of class the following day, Lana is inundated with thoughts and recollections of him. Does she now miss him? Raja screams at her mother later at a bookshop for not letting her buy anything. Angered, Lana makes her way outside. Raja chooses not to follow her, and before long, she is gone. Lana looks all over the shop for the young child, but she is not to be found. As Lana notices Benny pursuing Raja as the police arrive and begin reviewing the tape from the security camera, she becomes concerned. But, when Ward contacts her later, he informs her that Raja is with him at the house. In a strange way, Lana is relieved, and Ward is giving her an odd look. One evening, a banging sound downstairs awakens Lana. When she notices a window is open, she shuts it. Lana is so disoriented because she is tormented by her unpleasant experience with Benny in the past that Ward cannot help but notice it. Yet Lana is a shrewd lady, and whether or not she intended it, by letting him hug her, she makes a fool of herself. The next morning, Lana follows Benny around town in her car since she can't stand this terrible scenario any longer. Using his scooter, Benny is not aware of Lana's risky intent. At some time, Lana rear-ends him while driving directly next to him. She comes to a stop and exits the vehicle to see if she has finally managed to get rid of him. The movie ends here. I hope you enjoyed the video click the subscribe button for more movie recaps.